Thank you so much for joining me. It's Carly and welcome to today's episode of Crafting with Class. Today I have the Anna Griffin booklet album process video plus a few tips along the way. So this is the completed album that I shared a walkthrough of previously. So when you purchase this die set you get the inspiration sheet and as well as it contains the instructions. Now the instructions I'm going to share in this video differ from what is on the book because I'm sharing the create version of the instructions. Um, so this is the dies that you receive. It is a five piece die set. You get the hinges and then you get three sizes of pockets. As you can see, this set is pretty basic. So you'll need to bring in things from your stash to decorate. Now looking back at the directions, it tells you how many you will need of each one, but in the video for today, I will be sharing a different quantity because um, I'm going with the create instructions. Just know that um, for the ones here in the book, it gives you um, st the steps for creating a booklet that has three pages. I will create one that has four um, and reinforcing those side panels as well, which I think is definitely a must. I have die cut three of the white patterns or pattern paper, and then also two from the gold matte cardstock. And this is going to be for decorative purposes, but also these, this is the actual structure of the book. And then three hinges that will connect each card base to each other. Now I have four five by seven card bases that will make up my book and then I've cut out three hinges. So you need one less hinge than however many cards you're going to use in your book. What I like to do is to score along those score marks that the die creates for you, especially when you're using like specialty paper that I am here where these score marks are not as deep as I would like. So I just go ahead and take my score buddy and then just um, go ahead and score on those marks so that I can fold it a bit easier. So you're going to do that to all of those. For the side panels, I'm also reinforcing those two score marks. They're one inch apart and then do that with all of those. So you're going to take one of those panels and you're going to cut out that middle section out so that you only have the side panels. You're going to just do that on the score line. So the purpose of this is to kind of reinforce those sides, which I definitely recommend, but it's not in the instructions. Now you're going to take a separate piece. This is not one of the card panels. Um, this is just a scrap piece I had, and you're going to cut out two one inch strips. And again, this is going to serve as a um, decorative element, but also one to give it more structure. And then you're going to cut out one piece that's five by seven, and this is to support the back of your book. So those are the pieces that you will need. Now here's a quick tip. I learned this from the genius, Karen Berniston. And so I have this little husky cup and I put a paper towel at the bottom. I spray it three times with water and then I will put my, invert my glue bottle in it. And this will keep my glue bottle flowing freely for however long my craft session is. So it doesn't clog up, it doesn't get, I don't have to wait on it, it's ready to go all the time. It's such a genius tip. So that's why you will see that oftentimes in my videos. All right, so back to the construction. So you wanna take, so the gold is you know decorative, but it also makes those sides a little bit stronger, which definitely is something I would recommend. So you're gonna layer them together going to offset it a little bit so you can see that gold peeking out. Next I'm going to take my um, ruler and then I'm just going to use it to help me crease those sides because now the you know those two that are layered together make it a little bit stronger so I'm going to use the ruler to help me crease those really well. So you're going to do that to both of those sides. Okay, so there's one and then I have the other one ready. So these are going to be the side hinges. So in the middle you have that five by seven panel be cut out and that's going to be the back part of your booklet. So these are going to go next to each other like so and then you're going to lay your five by seven piece 
in the middle. So that is basically the construction of books. So it's super, super simple construction. So that is why definitely I would recommend those cutting those extra layers so that your book is a little bit sturdier, especially if you're going to use a ribbon closure. So now what you're going to do is, or I'm going to go ahead and use my liquid adhesive. And it's very important to get all the nooks and crannies. So this is one I would definitely use liquid adhesive for. So I'm going to put it all over. And now I am going to tell you I made a mistake here. <laughs> it's not a mistake mistake. It's just a like decorative mistake. So what I am going to do, what you see me doing is I'm gluing it to the back, right? And that's fine. Except that you see that on facing me is the decorative part, but that really should be in the back because I'm going to be putting the book on top of that. So nobody's going to see that. So I will have to, you know, fix this. Luckily, nothing tore, you know, too badly. <laughs> Everything came out okay. But just be aware, this part, it doesn't even matter because it's going to be completely covered up. So you want to pay attention to what's on the back where you are gluing those, that decorative part. So you're going to glue it, that five by seven panel, just like that. So you're going to glue it in between those score lines. Now, remember those two one inch strips that you cut out. So those are going to be glued to those little side panels. And that's going to be a decorative element and also an element that's going to give it a little bit more strength. All right, so here are those two that you cut out also. So this is going to strengthen the side panels, which definitely I would recommend. And so you're going to glue them to both sides like this. All right, so now I'm ready to the for the construction of the book. So you're going to take however many pages you want to include. So in my case, I'm doing four. And the way I like to do it is I like to put them side by side like so. And then bring in my hinge and just lay it across both of them right in the middle. So that's kind of like how I like to do it. But the way Anna showed it is she kind of stood them up and, you know, back to back. And then she put that, this middle part, like on top while, you know, it's standing up. I don't know if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> so either way it works. So this is just what I found was easier. So just, I want to burnish that down. And if you're going to do it this way, I definitely would say, let it dry completely. And then you just bend it up like a mountain fold and then just press that to secure it and then you're going to do the same thing to the rest of it all right so here I am on the last one so I have all those four cards and there is my book so I'm going to use my um organomic um binding tool there bone folder and just to make sure to burnish those really well all right so there's my book and I see the seams in there, um, not loving them, but I will, I will fix that in a moment. So here's where I realized, oh no, this is going to be covered. So I removed it. Luckily, as you can see, <laughs> I was able to do that. Okay. It didn't like, you know, completely destroy the paper or anything. So it's all good. I was ready to redo it, but luckily I didn't have to. And I, even though that looks terrible, it won't matter because once I put my book in, it will be completely covered and nobody will know that I had to tear up this book. <laughs> so just be aware, right? I'm here as a teacher to teach you, learn from my mistakes. So just be aware of what you have, you know, showing on the back because, you know, this front part, it won't matter. So just to remedy that seam showing in the middle, I decided to cover it up with some washi tape. And that didn't create any bulk because, you know, washi tape is nice and thin. And so I just used my bone folder just to make sure to burnish that in really well. I did end up have, um, having to add a little bit of glue to just the ends because they wanted to come up. But that was not a problem. Okay, so now I'm going to add all of the photo frame uh, parts. So I die cut the uh, photo frames. So this one is actually 
um, one of her concentric dies. I'm adding a little bit of foam. These are the Stampin' Up Dimensionals, which I love. I think these are like my all-time favorite foam adhesive squares. Oh, well, they're like octagons or hexagons or something. Anyway, um, so I'm just adding them all around. I'm only going to release the backing on two, one at the top and one at the bottom, just to kind of hold it uh, in place. And then when my daughter-in-law gets the picture she wants, she can just kind of pull them up and then release the papers on the rest of them to secure the photo and then the frame. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other one. And this one's from the photo easel card. So I took the, which is an awesome die set. And so I'm doing the same thing. So I'm putting the little foam there. I'm only going to remove the backing from one at the top, one at the bottom, and then I will adhere it to the other side. So I have alternating kind of photo frames. Well, different looks, I should say. All right, so once I center it, then I'll go ahead and continue with the rest of the pages and see here's where I needed to add a little bit of glue to the ends. All right, so I will continue with that. Now, I die cut uh, some these little panels that I put foam adhesive with, and I used the decorative elements. This is also from the photo uh, frames. So I just put another dimensional in the back, and then I'm, I'm using these to be like the title pages. And so I'm adding the last one there along the bottom. And so this side is pretty much done. And now on the back, I should say, I'm going to go ahead and add the uh, stickers to kind of be the titles on each of these pages. So I'm going to go ahead and take and add the stickers. Now, one thing I will definitely recommend is when you're working with stickers or anything like that, use your tweezers. Okay, don't don't do this because <laughs> you, then you know you get your fingerprints all over them, especially these stickers that are like uh, clear. So yeah, no, use use your um, tweezers so that you can place it on there. So. Um, I am just going through the little sticker sheet and I'm just choosing some that I want to add on there. So that first one said a wedding and I cut that apart because it was a one sentiment. And then I'm adding bride to this side and adjusting it. Here's where I'm like, okay, let me stop with this madness and I grab my tweezers. So now I can find the groom sticker and notice that when you have it on your tweezers, then you can move it around, right? And you're getting your fingers out of the way so that you can actually see. <laughs> and so that makes it easier. All right, so now my book is done. I'm ready to put it in. So I have put, um, or I'm kind of looking at it to see how I want to put it in. there. Okay, so I have put some, um, both some tape adhesive that you can see to the left and some wet adhesive just to give me that wiggle room so I can adjust it as needed, finding the best place um, to see what I'm doing here and line it up straight. So once I do, I'm gonna press down on it, making sure it's on there, and then I'm gonna go to the last page to press that in. And then I'm going to um, add some little bit, uh, a little border trim just to uh, make it pop even more. And these are actually from the Christmas ones that I got on clearance a while back for like $10. And you cannot tell these are Christmas. I mean, there's like bells on here, but hey, it's a wedding thing. So <laughs> it matches perfectly. So this is a really nice set. And the detail on these uh, is just stunning, just beautiful. So I definitely recommend this little border set because they're so, so detailed and just beautiful. And they're small, so they add that just, that, you know, little perfect touch. All right, so there is that. So when you open the book, it's just a little pop of gold, and I love it. Now, I don't know what happened to the footage of me putting together the right side of the album, 
but I will walk you through kind of what I did. It's just decorating, but I know that um, some of you like to see that, but here we go. All right, so on the front, I die cut the photo panel from the photo frames dies that, was, that were in Create 7. I used it throughout the book. On the inside page, I created a pocket with the middle die that comes with the set and that I cut it out out of gold just for that top detail and that is the left side pocket. And next, on the next two pages, I created two pockets. I used the um, corner die pockets from the Ribbon Bound Journal from Create 7. So those are those beautiful pockets um, on one on each page and then I inserted just a piece from their invitation and a scrap piece as like a tag or photo or journaling little piece. So there you see those. So I took those in each pocket. On the next page on the right is a full size pocket. This is the largest pocket that comes in the set. So I added a frame from Spellbinders at the top. The sentiment is from Anna's and, and then I added a couple of stickers and then I also die cut just the top of the pocket, you know, for that gold detail and so that it pops. And then in the pocket, I added this little mini album. And so I will walk you through how I made this next. And then in the last page, I added middle size pocket. I added the little dancers from the ballroom slider dies. I created two more little tags. I put stickers and that finishes up this side of the album. Now, once I cut out the photo frames and then the inside aperture for the photo, I had these pieces left over and I thought they were way too cute to like toss, right? So I decided the mini album would be perfect for this. So I went ahead and scored them at the quarter inch mark on my score buddy so that they could fold back. Uh, and so I did that to all of them. And then I went ahead and die cut just at the top part with matte glue uh, cardstock just to give it a little pop of color right there at the top and it's also going to strengthen where I'm going to put the hole for the ribbon and then I also took some washi tape that I used in the book so it would all coordinate together and then I went ahead and attached that right below just to give it a little bit more detail now it is it has that decorative uh, pattern on the front and the back it is plain so she could use the front of it as a like a place for a photo and then the back she could journal. So I'm just trimming around and making, you know, having that tape fit around it. I'm going to go ahead and burnish that down so it's nice and flat. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab all of them, line them up, take my crocodile and then punch a hole in the middle. And then I'm going to take some ribbon and that is how I'm going to bind the little book together. So I'm folding it in half, putting it through the hole, and then I'm going to bring it through the hole, the ends through the hole, and pull up to secure it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and trim the tails of the ribbon, and then I'm going to take some um, of this liquid fray thing so the edges don't fray. And actually, this was something that Anna used at Create. And so um, I ran <laughs> to Joanne's to get some because, yeah, it's super, super handy. So there it is. So definitely, I would recommend you, you know, fold on all those before you put it together. But it's, it's fine. So I'm just folding on all of those. And yeah, so there's this super easy, really cute little mini book. And to decorate, I'm taking more of those stickers from the sticker sheet. Since these are flat, these will be a perfect decoration for the front of this mini album. And this will be ready to put into that large pocket in the book. And the size of these will fit a three by five photo perfectly. And she can use them for journaling as well. So um, here it is. So here is the lap. The largest pocket that I made and that slides in there and slides out. 
So that was easy peasy and beautiful use of those leftovers, right? I think so. Okay, so here is the album. Now we need to create the closure. So I wanted to create a magnetic closure. I am taking a strip from the crop at home border dies. And I knew when I bought those expensive dies <laughs> that I would be turning them into some kind of belly band. And that's what I did here. So right now I'm kind of placing the elements and how I think I want them to go. And everything looks to go as I pictured in my mind. Sometimes it goes like that and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> but in this case it does. So now to work out the logistics. So I went ahead and took um, that middle panel and I know that I want to attach this end part of the belly band that's going to wrap around the left side of the book. I'm going to sandwich it in between that front panel and the back panel. And then I want to add that um, element to the side, the magnetic one. So this is a part of trying to figure out, you know, where to put the magnet, where it's going to make the best connection. And um, so here I decided that I'm going to go ahead and put one on the right and making sure those magnets align and then that, that that top circle is going to also be able to cover that bottom circle. And so I'm just putting it on the book, making sure that it's centered and where I want it to be, making sure that the right one is going to go ahead and have enough room to swing over to the front like so. Now, yes, this is a little bit of work, especially because I was figuring out everything along the way. Um, but if you don't want to work this hard for a closure, definitely just wrap the ribbon around. But, um, you know, I'm very extra, <laughs> if you haven't noticed. And I really wanted this belly band. So, yeah, I worked at it. And it worked out. So, it's all good. So, here's where I decided, nope, I'm going to need another magnet. So I went ahead and grabbed another pair of magnets and then attached one to the left side. So there's my magnets. And I buy these magnets on Amazon. And they're perfect because they're small and they're pretty thin, but they're very strong. So I am adhering one to the left and then I have the one that's on the right. So I'm using some um, score tape. And then now I want to attach the magnet at the bottom so that they can both catch each other when um, we close that top panel. So it, again, it's a lot of, you know, trying and trying and then until it works out. So now I'm going to remove the liner tape or the liner, I should say, from the tape. I'm also using white glue to reinforce a strong hold. And then I'm going to place that center medallion, that center panel on it to make sure I like where it goes. And then I notice, oh, I should have centered it to that medallion that goes at the bottom, but I was able to move it since I used that wet adhesive. And then, you know, I can just go ahead and rub out any of that wet glue that might've gotten stuck. So there it is, pretty much the belly band works and it's set to go. So now I'm going to put my paperweight just to make sure that that is pressed down nicely. So I'm going to shift it to the bottom part of that circle. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the other end. And I'm burnishing that with my foam folder just to make sure that is held on. So there it is. So that is pressed on firmly. And then there's the belly band. Now to try it out. So you place that in the middle of the book. Go in the left. And then pull in the right and there it is. So this is how it works out. Now here is what it looks like all around and then I added a little sticker to the right side of the panel and then my handmade for you little tag on the other side. So this is the finished album and I hope you um didn't find the process too tedious, <laughs> but um, I loved how it turned out. My daughter-in-law loved it, so it's all worth the work. And if you want to see a slow-paced walkthrough of the book, then I will link the video um, here so that you can take a look at a slow-paced look at <laughs> how 
the album all looks. I will give you a walkthrough of the completed album, and this will be very sped up, but as I mentioned, um, I have the previous video goes through the album in a much slower pace. I walk you through everything um, so that you can see it with more detail. So here I'm just giving you a quick look in case you don't want to go back to that video or you want just an overview of the completed album. So as I mentioned, I used a whole bunch of different materials because this die set doesn't come with anything to decorate. It just comes with the construction pieces. So feel free to shop your stash and find all your goodies that you want to decorate with. Um, I think this is a super easy album to put together and hopefully in this video, even though it's really long, <laughs> I hope that it has um, made sense and it has inspired you to go ahead and give this a try. It is not hard at all and it's a very unique, very um, fun album to put together and just have fun. I want to take this moment to really thank all of you who stopped by, subscribed, liked my videos, left your sweet comments. Um, I am not an influencer. I I'm not trying to sell you anything. I don't get free stuff sent to me. So I just am sharing because I really enjoy it. And your kindness makes it worth it to me. So thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. I thank you all. And I hope to see you again soon. Until next time. Bye.